Hi, Coach Joe Lucas, and welcome to the Magellan Network Show. For nearly 30 years, I have been focused on helping advisors become the best, both personally and professionally. This show is dedicated to sharing with you tools, tips, strategies, distinctions, things that are working now. I'd love for you to take a moment, and if you're watching this on YouTube, click the like button and also the subscribe button so you get automatic updates. And if you happen to be listening to us on a podcast, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and you leave a positive review for us. Now, with that said, let's get to today's episode. Welcome to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. And in this episode, what I'm going to do is, is give you a little bit of a briefing of uh, many conversations I've had with uh, pretty much all my private clients about where they're getting their new relationships from. And uh, for some of you, it may surprise you. For others, it will not be a shock at all. But I, I want to make sure that we have this conversation today inside this episode. So let's get into it. First of all, when somebody says, Joe, what's working from a business development or marketing perspective? My pat answers for over two decades has been, it all works. So do seminars work? Yes. Do adult education work? Yes. Does online lead management like Smart Advisors, does that work? Yes. Does uh, things like Snappy Cracker work? Yes. COIs? Yes. Cold walking? Still yes. Right? So the question is not what's working out there. The real question needs to be what's going to work for me? Right? So for example, if you're more introverted, don't like to public speak, seminars are probably not your jam. Right? Just terrible idea. Right? And, and what we need to understand is just because it's, it works for the, for the man or woman down the hall or for a buddy of ours or a friend uh, necessarily does not mean that's going to be our game. And what I find a lot of times is advisors get seduced with the shiny object silver bullet fix, right? So let's just go invest in this program or that program and, and magically, you know, all your worries will go away. And in my experiences, very, very rarely slash seldom is that the truth. So when I really think about, when I look at my clients, and by the way, this is something we talked about last year in business planning, and uh, it can, the, the story continues today. So as I'm talking to my clients, we're getting closer to the mid-year, you know, we're starting to talk about KPIs, like how many new clients this year, new money, top line, bottom line, things like that. We're starting to get ready for our mid-year review process. And... Uh, by and large, I would say, um, you know, everything's been pretty well. Most of my clients are at forecast or ahead of their forecast in terms of their goals this year, which is great. But when we start looking at new relationships, hey, where are these new relationships coming from? The fascinating part, predominantly, and I say predominantly, I'm talking, you know, upwards of 85 to 90% are coming from two very basic old school sources. Number one, referrals and introductions from current clients. Number two, referrals from other centers of influence. So my point is this, that if you're spending a lot of time and energy going forward in terms of like social media platforms and content, which by the way are important, so I'm going to bring this all full circle in a little bit here today. But a lot of advisors are, are, like I say, trying to buy their way out of a problem. Let's go throw some money at some Facebook ads. Let's throw some money at some lead gen, you know, some third-party lead gen programs. And uh, let's go do that. And that will magically solve our problem. And for the most part, it does not. Okay? Very rarely, in, my, in fact, in my entire career, I've not found one advisor that has one silver bullet trick that's made a radical difference. I think it's a recipe, right, if you will. So going back to what I just said about you know 85, 90% of new households coming from referrals, introductions, and COIs. So if that's my sample size, and by the way, so you understand my sample size is at least 70 plus advisor slash advisor teams. So these are wirehouse advisors, uh, IBDs, RIAs, so on and so forth. So, so this is not a, well, it just works for the subset. It's really a, a global scenario. And so... You've got to ask yourself, how excellent am I and or my team at understanding the referral and introduction game uh, with clients 
and understanding the center of influence game there too through our clients other advisors now to debunk both of these real quick because i know some of you can sit there and say well joe because here's the story right well joe you know real professionals don't ask for referrals right that's a load of crap or you know i've never been able to get a referral from a cpa and attorney well how many did you talk to five poor sample size right remember there's no silver bullet here. So this is about the law of large numbers and the law of consistency. These laws basically state this. You must do this over and over again, over long periods of time, brutally consistent in order to produce any major slash meaningful result. So just because you talked to a client five years ago uh, when they first became a client and you said, hey, don't keep me a secret or, hey, we're accepting new clients or whatever the conversation was, that somehow you're under the sense that a five-year conversation or not as a conversation, a statement is like ingrained in your client's brain. Come on. You and I both know that's not true. Conversely, oh, I talked to I talked to all my client CPAs, Joe. I said, great. How often? Well, a couple years ago. Again. Where's the consistency game there? So here's what I need you to be aware of. There's a rule that I have, okay? Here are the rules. If you want to generate referrals and introductions from clients and centers of influence, it requires three things, okay? Two, you control. The third one, you do not. Number one, you, i.e. the advisor, has have committed, have the mindset, understand the game, that referral induction gathering uh, or promotion is a daily game. It is not something we do every once in a while or when I remember it or anything like that. It has got to be your awareness. Now, if you're a part of our Magellan Network tribe, what do we talk about every business morning? Lock in your RI game today. Now, what's RI? Referrals and introductions. Really the same thing. Some, some people use different terms. It's really the same thing. So it's a daily game. That's number one, right? So you need so heightened sense of awareness for you. Number two, we need to indoctrinate, and that's not a negative word here, we need to indoctrinate your clients into the basic fact that we are here as a resource for their friends, family, colleagues, and coworkers, anything to do with money, retirement, investments, and finances, period. And that is not a one-time conversation, that is a continual conversation. Notice I use the word conversation, not demand. It is not about demanding names or who do you know or any of that terrible language. It's about just reminding them that we're a resource for people that they know daily. All right, it's number two. So we control two of the three things, right? The third thing we have no control over, timing. What we have to have happen is our client has a heightened sense of awareness inside of a conversation with a friend, family, colleague, and coworker where money, stocks, investments, retirement, whatever comes up and then they connect the dots. We control the first part of the narrative. We influence the second part of the narrative. We have no control over the third part of the narrative. We do not, okay? But it is a game that's played every day. Now, on the COI side, same doctrine, right? We need to be aware, we need to go play. We need to be in front of our COIs on a regular basis, understanding that if I have 100 CPAs, 95 of them are terrible business people. And you know what, there's only three or four that are gonna play ball with us, but we've gotta wade through the mess of the other 90 or so to go get them, right? What most advisors do is they go, they tip their toe in the water, they don't get an immediate result, they think, oh, this doesn't work for me, or I suck at it, and we're off to spend some money doing some other stuff, right? And again, 85 to 90% of all households generated from my client base in the aggregate, some it's 100%, have come from client referrals and COI introductions. So you've got to ask yourself, how do I level up this game? And what I'm saying to you is I gave you the referral. That's, I mean, there's no, I don't have a three day program. Hey, come to Joe's you know, referral boot camp, pay me five grand. None of that. Get your mind right. Get your morning ritual locked down. Understand you deserve the business. Have the conversations with your clients. Again, we're not doing the law and order, sit down with a slight, you know, slide the, slide the pad in front of them, go, hey, give me some names. It's a terrible idea. We're going to remind them we're here as, again, resource. It's all about positioning. It's all about framing. We're framing this conversation as a resource. We are a resource for people that they know. That's the frame. 
Not about, we're expanding my business and who do you know? Your clients don't care you're expanding your business. In fact, your clients don't want you to expand your business because if you expand your business, that means there's less of you for them. It's a terrible narrative. So stop it if you're doing it, right? COI, same thing. We just talk about being a resource for clients that they have who have questions around investments, money, retirement, financing, to consider us a resource. That's it. It is a number of times conversation, okay? That's how the game is played. Now, inside of that, you do need some tools. So what are those tools? Very simply, number one, you want to give your clients tools to help promote you. So what does that mean? It means that you do not abandon content. So you do not abandon your you know, personal content. So if you're doing stuff like on Facebook and LinkedIn and everything like that, make sure it's getting in the hands of your client. Now, how do we want to do that? If you're dealing with the boomer retirement rollover market and you're dealing with business people, these are not the millennials that are on, on Snapchat and Instagram and stuff like that. We are, e I'm one of them. I'm an email person, okay? So if you don't have a weekly like newsletter distribution going out with uh, some of your messaging, some other curated content like every Friday, then you're missing a big boat. Do not rely on your uh, content that's up on Facebook and up on LinkedIn and wherever else you're putting it that it's gonna magically A, show up. By the way, I wanna, I wanna tell you a little story. I hired a marketing consultant uh, a couple years ago, two years ago. And uh, this guy was one of the top guys in, in the industry, right? I had the privilege of meeting him at a conference before when conferences were still a thing. And he said, you have less than three seconds. I want you to think about when you're on your mobile device, when you're doing your LinkedIn feed and your Facebook feed, how fast you make decisions on what you want to watch. Three seconds. If you don't capture attention in three seconds, it's gone. And by the way, the average Facebook uh, LinkedIn user uh, scrolls over 160 feet a day on their mobile device. True story. So here's my point that if we're going to be omnipresent inside of our clients, we're going to give them content and we're going to ask them to forward it to people that they know, yes, social media is fine, but it better be backed up with a good email program, like every Friday, okay? It is, when I thought about that, I, again, I, I invest a lot of money in my business, right? So when I hire these marketing people, I say, okay, what works? And they said, it's all about demographics. So if you want younger people, right, then they're all about Snapchat and Instagram, uh, TikTok, all that jazz, right? If you're dealing with boomers, like 50 plus, when that's where the money is in my mind, right? We are creatures of email. We are the babies of AOL dial-up, if some of you remember that, right? With the ding-ding and all that noise. Email is not a three-second conversation. Email, if it, you know, they'll open it. Now, they may not click on it, but they'll at least open it in most cases, okay? You have a much higher read rate there, a much higher interaction rate there. So make sure you're deploying email inside of your games. Make sure that all your clients are on your email list. Make sure all your COIs are on your email list. Make sure all your prospects, everybody in your universe is on your email list. Make sure all your LinkedIn contacts are on your email list. Like you need to really build this out. Your email list is really one of the most valuable tools you have that most advisors will overlook. Why? Because it's simple to just take some crappy content, throw it up on LinkedIn and away we go. Speaking of crappy content, the last thing I ever want to see is a market update or some stuff that your firm puts out. Nobody cares about that. Seriously, nobody cares. Get in your car. And for those of you who are watching, grab this. It's called a phone. It has a pretty good microphone, pretty good camera on there, right? And go ahead and talk. Tell the story. Now, next thing you're going to say, well, Joe, how about compliance? Great. Figure it out. Seriously. I'm not trying to be harsh. Figure it out. Don't let that be a story in your head saying, well, I can't do this because of my compliance won't. Hey, there's always a way if you're committed. This is what's working. Remember, we are in the relationship business. Keyword relationship, right? Two people, one versus the other, you and the client. You can leverage those relationships. Remember the term relational capital. Relational capital. That is the currency that we truly trade in. It's not about our, how much money we manage or what our fees are. Because remember, at the end of the day, you and I, inside of my game, are an at-will relationship. Nobody has a six-month, one-year, five-year contract to do this stuff. It's all about making things happen today for the person, right? for the client. We need to remember that. So relational capital is the goodwill that we have that we need to nurture. That's our trade, that's, that's our real value, relational capital. 
So how do we increase relational capital? We care, we communicate, we solve problems, we be there for our clients. Now, it's an intangible. So how do you take relational capital and turn it into something tangible? Very simply, it's by making sure we have all the client's money, we've done everything, we have optimized them, right? That's now tangible. We now leverage them through introductions and referrals, right, to friends, family, colleagues, and coworkers. That's number two. And then number three, we go upstream or sidestream, depending on your viewpoint, to their other professionals, their CPA, their attorney, their business coach, their marketing consultant, their HR consultant, their therapist, their hairdresser, whomever it happens to be, right? That is our game. So, second half of 2021, what I really like to see from all of you is an absolute commitment to up and leveling up your referral and introduction game for the second half of this year. Based on my data, that is truly what's working. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying abandon the other stuff, but if you don't have this game locked in and you're doing all this other stuff, you're missing a massive, massive opportunity. Okay? One, two, three, off you go. Have a great week. See you again for the next episode of the Magellan Network Show. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, if any of this resonated with you, I invite you to come to MagellanNetwork.net and we have a powerful group coaching community of like-minded advisors. Come in for a trial. You and I will have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Let's see if I can help elevate your game both personally and professionally.